Nityanandam, with the auspicious grace and blessings of my Guru, His Holiness Paramahamsa Nityananda, or Swamiji, I welcome you to this video. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today. And in today's video, I basically wanted to share about an experience I had today, um, which is an experience I've had many times since being a disciple of Swamiji. But I got, it was just a beautiful um, space and just wanted to share it because everyone out there who's watching has the same opportunity as I do. And so if you have been keeping up with this our Sangha or you were able to attend this weekend's um, discourse that Swamiji gave, it was um, the, the anniversary of this amazing um, book called Jivan Mukti or Living Enlightenment. This book, which is a pretty big book, um, was re released several years ago, and it is essentially the essence of all of Swamiji's teachings. He has said it's the essence of everything he has said, is saying, and will say. And this book, for me, um, has a lot of significance because I feel when I was getting to know Swamiji after first meeting him, which was, you know, end of 2007, and then this book came out maybe a year later. Literally, this book was like my, my portal to Swamiji, my guide to Swamiji. I just, there's so many books. Actually, all the books uh, have given me that feeling, but this one was like so, um, so many topics are discussed in it, and... Um, it's a book that literally, it doesn't just, you know, one thing we say is like, when you want to experience this book, just pick any page. You you can read the book from beginning to end. Um, you don't have to, though. You can just flip to any chapter or just randomly pick a page, and that will, that whatever you see will be a message directly for you, so precise to whatever it is that's going on in your life. And... For me, it's not even like it just answers questions. It's when that experience happens when you open a page, very casually open a page, and what you read just hits you. It's You know it's Swamiji, and you feel so much gratitude that it's a reminder that, yes, he's listening. He knows what you're going through. And look, here's an answer. Here's a way to um, help you on the path. So having reminders like that when you're living a spiritual life is very, very important. Whether you're a sannyasi or not a sannyasi, that's why everyone loves this book because it is for everyone. It's a book for life. It's a book for living and enjoying life. It's a book for living enlightenment. And... It's very rare that in our lives, with all the sufferings we go through, with all the pressures, that we have something so available to us that just that just is um, a resource to lift us, without having to, you know, take any kind of unusual, I mean, a, a legal drug or take some addictive prescription medicine or um, do gambling or do things which cost us money, which give us addiction, which um, make us feel down afterwards. Those are the things that many of us go to to uplift ourselves. But just a few seconds, a few minutes with this book, I keep holding it up so you don't forget it. And I will include a link because it's available freely. You can download it and just watch it. I mean, read it on your computer, on your phone or wherever. And get the benefits that you deserve to get. And I'll just pick... Um, I made a, actually a video before on this book, which was um, my favorite chapter in this book, which is the Sanyas, Sanyas, the Ultimate Gamble. That's the name of the chapter. And when I was contemplating Sanyas, that's the chapter I read over and over and over and over again. So if you're thinking about Sanyas, please read that chapter. It's so beautiful. It's so inspiring. And for me, it was like I knew sannyas was right for me because I was clicking with 
every word, every line in that um, book, I mean, in that chapter. The rest of the book was perfect also, but for me, that, that Sanya's chapter was like just cutting to the point. It was cutting to the chase. It was like, this is it. And um, again, if you're thinking about Sanya's, really, I encourage everyone to just absorb that chapter. And I'm just going to pick one chapter and let's see what Swamiji shows us today. And um, I'll share with you. Oh, okay, I flipped to this this title, which and this chapter is called "You Are the Best." Why compare? Well, thank you, Swamiji. Actually, comparison was something that I struggled so much with before meeting Swamiji, and only after meeting Swamiji, able to come out of that. My mind was so um, just naturally compared. It was like automatically always comparing, comparing, comparing. So I'll read this. Is. Okay. I'm reading the section called Why Comparison, which is page 151. Why exactly do we compare ourselves with others? First, we compare ourselves because we have never understood ourselves. We are not aware of who we are and what we have. Second, society has conditioned us from our birth to evaluate ourselves based upon others. From childhood, the comparison starts. In school, the grading system introduces a child to com competition and comparison with others. There are standard benchmarks to measure a child's qualities such as mathematical ability, scientific aptitude, artistic skill, athletic ability, musical talent, and so on. But what we don't realize is that when we try to measure a quality using a standard benchmark, it is nothing but using comparison as a scale to measure the child himself. We are literally punishing all children with the reward system we use in schools. The child gets used to judging and knowing himself by looking at others and comparing himself with them. He has no understanding of himself based on what he is. He knows himself only based on others. A small story. I love the small stories. Once a man was testifying in court about a road accident. Suddenly, the man noticed that the court reporter was writing while he spoke. As the man started speaking faster and faster, he noticed that the reporter was writing faster and faster. Suddenly, the man said to the court reporter, Please don't write so fast. I am not able to keep up with you. Every judgment you make about yourself is based on some comparison. But why does the idea of the other enter into your mind? It is because you have not looked in and realized who you are. You have not experienced the bliss and tremendous potential you have inside you. You feel incomplete. You have not been able to express yourself as you are. So the emptiness and lack of fulfillment inside makes you feel inferior to others. There's just so much in this book. And that one chapter, every line, if you're really listening, can give you a breakthrough. So I highly encourage, um, I mean, hopefully you caught the gist of what Swamiji was saying about comparison, how futile it is. And there's a whole chapter on it. So if you feel you're caught up in it, if you feel you're, you're a, a product of the Western education which just abuses your, um, abuses children into constantly comparing themselves and feeling bad about themselves and not being able to um, understand, um, not being able to, I should say, um, deal with failure, deal with not being the top or the best, so many things come with it. The pressure of grading system, of, of grades, tests, um, exams, all of that comes because of our system is based on comparison. And it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop with school. We all know once we leave school, and you go to a J-O-B, a job, and you're constantly compared with your colleagues, your peers, and it becomes sometimes very cutthroat. Some people leave it all and do something else where they're by themselves. Not everyone's cut out for that. But then there's other problems with that as well. We don't want to be in a structure. So what Swamiji is showing, what's so beautiful, 
is that he is having an organization. He is having so many people involved in that organization that are coming from this background where comparison was, is a way of life. But he is bringing them all together, having them work with each other, having them um, think of ideas, execute, implement together from a spiritual basis, from the understanding that each one of us is Maha Sadashiva is that supreme consciousness, that pure consciousness. That is the only identity Swamiji gives us, that you are that. So when all of us work from that space and are reminded through our training, through all the processes, that that's our actual state and anything else is just us falling back into um, wrong cognitions. So beautiful, beautifully, Swamiji is removing all these wrong ideas we have about um, working with others, about dealing with others, about success. But still, we're not running away from organization. We're actually becoming more and more organized. But when you do it with the right context, in the right ambiance, it doesn't have to be this torture. It doesn't have to be this mental torture of comparison and... Um, trying to compete and make up for what you think you don't have and overcompensate and just get into more, a deeper and deeper ditch. So uh, thank you for allowing me to share. I will probably make more and more videos about this book. Some in our Sangha won't even call it a book. It is literally a deity because it is uh, Saraswati herself speaking. And it's so healing. It's so inspiring. It is... Um, you'll see. And it's not something you have to hear from me. You know, I'm just reading so that you get inspired and you get it for yourself. I want you to uh, experience what I've experienced and continue to experience and share it with others. People need to hear it. I'll just tell you what the chapters are so you get an idea of what you're getting. And you can start thinking about which chapter you're going to read first. So... Chapter one, you are your emotions, which talks about love, worry, stress, fears, pain, energy, guilt, comparison, gratitude. Then there's next chapter is deeper truths of life, where it talks about karma, unclutching, death. You are intelligence. Well, intensity is the unfailing way. Responsibility elevates you. Innocence regained opens many doors. Um, these are more chapters. You are part of the collective consciousness. Global peace begins from you. Sanyas is the ultimate gamble. Enlightenment is the key to your kingdom. And then there's paths to blissful living. Why meditate? Then different techniques. Then there's a whole chapter on the master. This will really give you context of this whole master-disciple relationship, this whole concept of a guru. For many in the West um, who have not exposed to, and even people in the East, it's not a, um, a, well, a commonly practicing anymore to have a guru and really follow a guru and having the right context. So there's so many sections in that, that which will give you the right information, the right context and inspiration, and you will want a guru. <laughs> Then meditations for living enlightenment, the touch of the divine energy, yep, and blissful sharing. So there's testimonials of others. So thank you, Swamiji, so much for this book. Thank you um, for everyone for listening. And uh, if you subscribe to my channel, I, one request I have is get this book for yourself. And um, if you have any questions, if you want to share, you should make a video, share, and let other people benefit. And again, thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Swamiji and Nityanandam.